Featured Contract 8. It's 15 targets without subduing anybody. And I decided to do it in under 15 minutes without a gun. Because I'm completely insane, I guess. I don't know. Either way. And to start off, we're going to be out here in the woods. I like to start out in the woods because uh, it gets everybody in a certain position by the time I actually get into the club. And, you know, by the time I get in position my first kill, everybody's where I want them to be. Better than running around the club accomplishing nothing. So we're going to head over here to our first guy, so I call the Rocket Man. But uh, before we do that, we're going to grab our handy dandy syringe. Pretty sure it's about a thousand years old, but it'll it'll do the job. So we're going to head up over here. There's this little skid here that uh, you can get caught on and makes it like a nightmare to climb onto that ledge. Uh, I've reset on that a lot of times. Because uh, in this beginning part, in probably the first ten minutes, I'd say, you, you want to be really, really precise in where you're going and what you're doing. I, I want to get this coin toss off quick. And I want to make sure it bounces really close to the wall. Waste as little time as possible we'll hiding bodies. So the more that they look like an accident, the better. And you're going to find out why I call him Rocket Man. And we're grabbing this propane tank uh, for later. Uh, we're taking the long way around the roof for a reason. Because by the time we get to the round of the back, uh, people are going to be in the spot that we want them to be in. We're basically just running around back until we get there, so... So yeah, we're just going to fast forward really quick. Okay, so over here is who I call hashtag work life. And we basically just got to wait till he turns around. And we're going to run down this wall. We want to make sure the our target sees us, but our friend over there does not. And as we're going to do that, we're going to slip by here. We're going to throw a propane tank in between the chair and the uh, barrel. And we're going to make our way back. We're going to go behind the wall to cut off line of sight. And once we get back into this bush here, um, this is pretty much going to be why we don't want um, our friend over here to have a, uh, to have a question mark. is because when she clears hers... Um, we don't want her to say anything to him. Uh, we want him to be on the phone. So, we're going to use the crowbar to break in through this window here. And that's the only time we use the crowbar to open anything. Now that we're in the club, our first goal is to leave the club. So by now there should be an explosion, and we're going to make our way to the biker hideout. So we'll see you soon. basically just play with this door until Buddy comes over here. And just like with Rocket Man, we just want to toss the coin and have it land close to the railing. Okay, so now that we got our coin back, we're going to make our way down here. Now this is where the movements get pretty precise. It's not going to look like it, but trust me, we want to get through here pretty quickly. There's going to be a camera coming around the corner. Now we're going to take that out with the crowbar because we can pick that right up as we go down. And uh, the story mode guy, or our story mode target, is going to get slightly distracted. We don't need him to get too, too distracted, but we're just going to get distracted for a couple seconds because we're going to have a window of opportunity coming up. Now we're not going to care too much about the two guys in the greenhouse just yet. We're actually after our friend over here. So we're going to angle ourselves slightly towards the window. 
Because trust me, the, the closer we are to this window, the better. Alright, so by the time Guy turns around, we're going to be finished throwing the body into the uh, construction laundry here. And he's going to go look for the gun. Now, fortunately for us on this run, uh, he went to the left side of the box instead of the right side. Now, you can still make it through this window if he goes to the right side of the box, but the window of opportunity is much smaller. It's still doable, but it's really, really, really tight. Let's see, we're just going to run around here again. I'm going to pop through these doors. And we're going to turn on the sprinklers and basically just do a little song and dance while we wait for these guys to come over here and get strangled. The first guy we're just going to wait for, you know, naturally. I would love to just poison that room, but there's no instant heart attack everybody in the room. Uh, poison. That would be nice, though. So, one thing we do is we do not want him to turn that off. So we're gonna, you know, mop the floor real quick. You know, even though I've done this run a hundred times, I, I still have fun with it, as you can tell. That was the last time I brought this. I'm sorry, we're gonna run down here. We're gonna go to the last floor of the biker hideout. I'm oh, sorry, the first floor of the biker hideout. We're gonna take out our brick. And we're gonna smash this camera. Now we're not gonna use our crowbar on this camera, simply because we don't want to risk come uh, going to pick it up. As you can see, uh, buddy, there's already about to spot us, and we don't really want any more complications. So the the less like variables in the room, the better. And with this guy, we do want him to turn the light switches back on for two reasons. One, we don't want any extra distractions in the room. You know, the less people to find this guy's body, the better. And also, it actually it sets up enough time for us to snag who I call the Wanderer, who is going to be coming into play very, very soon here. It was like, I have nightmares about this guy now, I swear to God. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So we're going to head down to Rolf's office. Uh, Rolf needs to get his eyes checked, I swear to God. Um, and we're just going to go by Lucky and his partner here. Uh, don't worry, we're going we're to cover Lucky in a second. Alright, so yeah, we're going to go down here to Rolf's office. So again, we're going to probably spend a little bit more time than I wanted trying to get this guy's attention, but it was actually a blessing in disguise. Because as you can see, that by the time... Or in the time that I'm waiting for this guy, I'm going to be flashing on instinct to keep an eye on uh, the Wanderer over on the top right there. And he's the guy who wanders with the captain of the main story uh, squad or whatever. I can't really remember the names. Okay, so finally we get Rolf to you know spot the half-naked homeless man standing in his freaking office. We're going to go and strangle him, give him a little big uh, hug with our uh, registered trademark IOI headphones. Just drag him onto the corner here. I'm grabbing the pass here for literally no reason. I just felt like it. This is my favorite part right here. Because we open up the doors. The camera's in the perfect spot. He's just far enough away. And we can just do a flying knee to his kidney. Mm, just snag him real quick. We're going to pop him in the laundry hamper over here. Everything's a laundry hamper to me. And this is the only time we pick up a gun, and that's just to get it out of the way of the guards that are about to come out of Rolf's office. So we're never going to use this gun, we just want it off the ground, because we don't want to be stuck in this laundry hamper. If they actually see that gun, we're going to be stuck in there for about six seconds longer, and that'll destroy us. And what's going to happen here is they're going to be basically the guy watching the monitor. And this is why we wanted to get in and out of that hamper real quick, because we want to grab that coin back. Because uh, the guy who watches the monitor has a friend who I've nicknamed the Dick because he's a massive dick. Not because his name is Richard, but because I think he's a dick. Look at him back there walking up like a dick. With eyes that could spot us like a dick if we're too late. And now we're able to snag that guy real quick. Let's take a quick flash of uh, that dick over there standing over there like a dick. I don't like him, can you tell? Because he's a freaking dick. Anyway. 
So we're gonna head back over to Rolf's office. And we're gonna say one last goodbye to Rolf. Okay, say goodbye to Rolf. Awesome. All right, so now we're gonna head up over to Lucky here. Now, the reason we call him Lucky, um, obviously the Lucky is not the guy that's highlighted in red. Um, because he keeps a coin. He actually keeps one of our coins. A classic coin. Ah, he's so lucky. Uh, what's unlucky, I wasn't too happy about this, but he takes a good 50 years, you know, to go get that coin. But that's okay. Because eventually Lucky does go and get his coin, which will be his lucky coin. And we're going to go give this guy a very sharp pat on the back. So, and the thing with the lethal syringe on that is that it gives a heart attack, so people just think they died of natural causes. So we can just leave his body there. Run past Sleeping Beauty over here. And we're going to make our way down this hallway. We're just going to wait for Buddy here to turn his head. Yeah, and there we go. We're just going to make our way down. And after this, it's pretty textbook. Uh, it's basically this guy's a free bartender costume. And once we get through him, I'm going to explain the last guy. Now that that's done, he's got one left to go. And honestly, I was racking my brain for like a good probably half hour trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to get this guy. And for my magnificent squirrel brain, like, it was quite the challenge. Because how are we going to get this guy? He's in the hallway in a room full of, well, simply just throw a coin at the ceiling. Bounces off the ceiling and it lands on one of those uh, crates over there. You can't actually get it. Now luckily for us, his AI thinks that it happened on the second floor, and because he can't actually grab the coin off the ground because it's on one of those totes, he decides to go upstairs and get it. And fortunately for us, he never even makes it to the stairs. And that is how you kill 15 targets in under 15 minutes. With no guns, with no shoes, no sanity. God, why did I do this to myself? I don't know. I'm not going to lie, it was a lot of fun. This was a blast. I, I, I can't believe I actually pulled this off. Thanks for coming by, and uh, yeah. Like, subscribe, comment, all that other fun stuff. Have fun out there. Peace.